Hey, it's me, the Matrix Refugee, on Friday morning. And I'm going with some natural lighting today. Just decided, okay, I'm going to leave the room light off, and the uh, early afternoon sunlight is coming in through the, win the window in here, and a bit of a catch-up entry yet again. <laughs> I guess I'm going to make these every other day from the look of things. Oh, well. <laughs> Anywho, but... Uh, uh, the rest of Tuesday and Wednesday wasn't exactly weren't exactly very good days because I wound up having a bit of an anxiety attack th uh, Tuesday night. So, and then Wednesday was kind of I was functional, but my nerve endings were burned, as it were. I mean, I don't know how else to describe it. It's a very uncomfortable feeling. I don't really want to go into detail as to what set off the anxiety attack. It's rather personal, but you know. I guess I I suppose I I guess the best way to describe me is a functional mentally ill person. <laughs> so anyway, I won't exactly say it, but I I haven't been dragging myself about. It's just you know okay. I gotta do things to take care of myself. I've been a little slow doing things I'd like to do, uh, role play tagging and writing, but um, I've been doing a lot of reading. I've been reading more of uh, Uncle Stevens just after sunset. And also, I finished reading uh, a quiet horror novel by Monsignor Robert Hugh Benson. The title of it is *The Necromancers*, and it was it was very it was extreme it was extremely good. I, this was recommended by a young author who was interviewed on the Lovecraft Ezine uh, Sunday night web chat. And I was like, and you know, I was looking. I had heard, I knew Robert Hugh Benson. I had read his uh, *Lord of the World* with my mother a couple few years ago, and you know, love that. I like his, I like Robert Hugh Benson's style. It's a very, it's a very quiet, meditative voice that he has, and it's very well suited to quiet horror. <clears throat> so the *Necromancers* involves a young man who's, you know, the love of his life has just passed away and he's distraught over that. So he got, he gets, in, he gets in touch with a spiritualistic medium through this, you know, friend of his family that who's this slightly daffy lady. That's one of those, one of those that's always trying on fad religions for sight, for size, you know, like the sort that, you know, uh, one week they're into, you know, they're into Scientology, and the next month they're studying Kabbalah, and a few months later they're, you know, into Gnosticism, you know, or they go down to Salem, and all of a sudden they're, you know, you know, let it be, you know, I worship the goddess Fluffia. Well, not to rag too much on, not to rag too much on people that have a more lighthearted approach to paganism or witchcraft, whichever you wish to call it, but... <laughs> Sometimes it just gets a little. Eh? I mean, to, in my experience, the goddess of nature is not, you know, a cute, fluffy, you know, fluffy-haired blonde, you know, frolicking in, a, you know, a, a, a grove in the woods with bunnies dancing around her. In my experience, the goddess of nature can be, you know, fierce. <laughs> you know. What do they say about nature, red and tooth and claw? Yeah, that's kind of been my experience with her. <laughs> anyway, beside the point. So, this young guy is, you know, he gets gets in touch with the medium and will wants, you know, wants him to, you know, summon the spirit of his beloved. And this guy gets way too deep in it, and he winds up getting something unpleasant come through and attach itself to him, which winds up becoming a spiritual battle for his soul and the girl that, who really loves him is, you know, involved with, you know, it get, gets into, you know, gets involved in the spiritual warfare and winds up getting hurt in the process and, but it has a good ending. I, you know, light triumphs over dark, although they're, although not without a cost, which I thought was really, I thought, I thought was really good. It's, I think it's, it's a little slow, but, you know, that's kind of part of the course with, you know, late 19th, early 20th century novels. And I just all around, I just all around liked it very much, and I highly recommend it. I mean, I just you know, if if you're into quiet horror, you know, if you're not, if, you know, if if you're into stories that you know, it's really about the people, and you know, the things that go bump in the night aren't you know banging and crashing about. It's more you know, little subtle 
bumps and, you know, spooky auras and that sort of thing. I mean, it's, you know, if they were to do a Hollywood movie of this, it would be, a, it, I think, or should I should say, if they were to do a movie of this, it, I think it would probably wind up having to be an independent horror flick because, well, for, although that might be a little tricky because it's kind of a period piece. I mean, I suppose you could update it a little, a little bit, but, you know, I, I personally wouldn't want to tinker with it. You know, I wouldn't want to tamper with it too much, but, uh, you know, for that matter, you know, <laughs> memes and seances and stuff like that, I mean, they still happen, but they're not, they're, they're not kind of, they're not exactly the fad thing that they were in Robert Hugh Benson's day and age, you know, and they weren't the, you know, the Victorians and their, you know, table tipping. <laughs> um, anyway. So, you know, incredibly well written book and just really, just, just, just really, really, really intriguing and just a very good, quiet, if, if, you know, it, it's, it's a horror novel for people who usually don't read horror novels, is what I'd say. Yeah, I finished reading that and now I'm kind of looking at my pile of stuff that needs to be finished reading or need, I need to finish reading rather. So rooting around to that and seeing what I can pick out of that. I, I Yeah, I, admittedly, I do have two and three and four and five books going at once, so I've also signed up just for the heck of it. I mean, people are, you know, people on my, um, that I follow on Facebook are having fun with it, and, you know, it looked interesting, but I started, I got involved with uh, Goodreads, so you can check out my Goodreads page on that. I'm Renee Mulher, or Renee C. Mulher, I believe. Anyway. So if you have a good read page, good yeah, good reads page, don't hesitate to add me on there. Yeah, you know, we can you know you can see what I'm reading. You know you can see the crazy stuff that I've got on my shelves. Which okay, right now a lot of you know a lot of horror, a lot of fantasy, and a lot of H.P. Lovecraft involved things. <laughs> that seems to be part of the course lately. And what else? Uh Ran some errands yesterday with my mother, picked up my paycheck, did a little shopping at the dollar store, uh, went to the post office with her, went to the bank to cash in some quarters. Unfortunately, I've had some short weeks lately, so I haven't been able to put much in savings, which is a little irritating, especially since I have some dental work coming up next week. Nothing major, it's just a sealant needs to be put on and, you know, you know, no major stuff, just you know, maintenance. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, lost my place in my mental book. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dollar store shopping, but that's always kind of fun. You never, you never know what kind of crazy stuff you're going to come up with. And sometimes you get, you see things that you didn't know that you wanted this thing, but now you know, once you see it, you want it. Uh, they got their 4th of July patriotic decorations and, uh, whatnot out, which, you know, Okay, I I am not as patriotic as I used to be. We'll just say this policies in this country that have really made me. You know, hi NSA people who might be watching me through this web camera. I see you. You're looking at me. Now I'm looking at you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, that probably makes me sound crazy, and I am crazy. <laughs> anyway, uh totally beside the point, but, uh, you know, looking at the patriotic decorations and just, you know, hey, this is nice stuff. And they had red, white, and blue fairy wings. And I'm looking at these, and I'm thinking, hmm, these could be cute. This, this could be fun to wear to the Memorial Day Parade if they have one in town this year. So <laughs> I bought myself a pair of fairy wings, <laughs> you know? Sometimes you just got to take the kid in you and just let, the, you know, let him or her have some fun, you know? You know, you can't, you can't always be boring and dry and adult. Sometimes you just gotta, you know, have some fun. So. I've got annoying pop-ups on the screen. Well, they're not pop-ups, they're just, uh, uh. Notifications from things that are updating. I guess I've always just updated it. It's like, now, so. No, I can't see what's. I can't see what I'm doing on the screen. <laughs> well, the camera can still see me. Sometimes I, I sometimes I worry that I don't emote. My face doesn't emote enough. 
So if my facial expressions are a little exaggerated, it's because I can see what I'm filming. And sometimes I'm not sure that I'm, you know, especially my eyes, it seems like I don't, maybe maybe it's the camera making me nervous because, or, you know, just making me self-conscious rather, but, you know. But anyway, okay, I'll try not to, try not to look too wooden while this, uh, while this vacation clears itself out. There we go. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties, please stand by. <laughs> anyway, um, I lost my place in my mental book, so. <laughs> ah, that's right, yes. The the, the uh, Patriarch Color Fairy Wings, red, white, and blue. <laughs> They're kind of kid size, but hey, you know. I'm going to wear them anyway, whether they're kid size or grown-up size or what have you. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to have fun with it, you know, wear them to the you know, Memorial Day parade and just have, have, have a little fun because what they do, what, what happened, what winds up happening is, you know, if I get, if I get some, the time off for it and you know, I get the chance, I'll, what I do is I'll walk up as far as I can get before the parade actually starts. And I practically wind up meeting it. And that's, sometimes I sometimes I get a mile up, you know, up Main Street after you know, which is which gets shut off. So I always have fun walking down the center line because hey, you know, people are walking back and forth across the street, you know, with their picnic coolers and whatnot. I'm gonna have a little fun, and if I hear a vehicle coming in the distance, I just scoot over to one side or the other, just get out of the way. One year, it was a hot, sunny day, and I want to buy a red parasol from one of the Google vendors that, you know, hang around on, you know, parade routes and whatnot. Because I didn't have a parasol anymore. I had one when I was a kid, but it seems to have disappeared. So I thought, eh, I'm going to get myself a parasol. Sometimes you just, you know, spring for things, you know. Plus, you know, I need a sunshade anyway, so... Plus, I, that day I'd also forgotten to wear my hat, and it was, you know, bright sunny day, and hmm, I've got to do something to keep the sun off me, so. So I bought myself a red parasol, and I'm walking down the center aisle, center line, and I'm having fun pretending to be a tightrope walker. So I walk past this house where there's a bunch of people on their lawn having a cookout, and, you know, waiting for the parade to start. And this goofy guy calls out to me, Hey, where's the drink that goes with that umbrella? Because it looked kind of like a giant version of those little umbrellas that they put in fruity drinks in Chinese restaurants or whatnot. So, in the spirit of having having fun and playing along, I said, oh, I already drank it because it's a hot day. If I knew you were here, I would have saved you some. <laughs> Which got a, you know, a, you know, gale of laughter out of the guy and out of some of his buddies and family members and whatnot, so... When people, you know, have fun with you, you gotta have fun with the fun back with him, you know? <laughs> it's fun to have fun, but you have to know how. <laughs> to quote the great uh, Dr. Seuss. Anyway. So, <laughs> this this year, it might be, if, it, if it's warm enough, it might be fairy wings and a parasol. <laughs> you never know. We'll see what happens. Memorial Day can be unpredictable up here in, in the New England area. It can be, you know... It can be warm and sunny. It can be summer-like. It can be, you know, sunny and cool. Sometimes, you know, damp and cold, and sometimes warm and damp. I mean, it's May and just spring in general. It can be really unsettled. It's like you know, it might be spring, but we have a saying it here in Massachusetts, and I think it's a quote from Mark Twain: "If you don't like the weather, just wait a little while." Because it changes so suddenly sometimes. It's like one day it could be, you know, sunny and nice, and the next day it could be cold and windy, and the next day it can be, you know, raining. The next day it could be whatever, you know? Sometimes we get snow in May. The most dramatic one was, I think, when I was a. the, the year I was born, or. I don't know, the year, the year I turned one, it was. It was one of those that it was, we had so much snow that it actually broke branches off trees because they were all leafed out or, you know, and, you know, flowering or something or other, but it was breaking branches off trees. Um, then there was another little uh, snow squall that we had. I think it was in, it was May, May the 18th, uh, 2001. That was really strange. 
I was going out running errands and I brought the umbrella with me because the weather forecast was for rain. I'm, you know, walking along and I see, you know, little white specks coming out of the sky and I'm like, is that, what is that? You know, is that, is that sleet? Is that snow? Oh, that's snow! <laughs> Oh, yeah, we had precipitation. It was just a different variety than they predicted. It was cold enough that it snowed, or at least cold enough in the upper atmosphere. That was really strange. I mean, it was just enough... It was just enough to put a sugar coat... You know, when I sugar coat... Yeah, a sprinkling of sugar on the ground. But now, it, you know, on, like, lawns and bark mulch and planters and whatnot, but not, you know, and enough to make the pavement damp, but not enough to really account for much. That was that was quite strange. So <sighs> So yeah, and that well, I think I'll say I'm running out of things today. I always have something to say. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I'm going to sign off for now and get this up posted for you folks and uh, go get ready for work because I gotta work this afternoon. <laughs> so and that's the way it was for me on May the 1st, 2015.